All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to the dig site. Um, before I get into the topic of this video, you may notice I've got some uh, some fuzz growing there. It's 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 quarantine, all right. I haven't shaved in a couple of days. <laughs> Lay off me for it. Don't worry, it'll be gone soon. Um, today I'm talking about a quite a, uh, a popular topic, in, especially in in um, social media, and and I think it's become a bit of, a bit of a problem, to be honest. Um, why is, does Australia have so many dangerous and venomous animals? Well. Just that question alone kind of irritates me because we don't really actually have very many dangerous creatures. We just have really weird creatures, but you know, they're not very dangerous. The reason people seem to think that we have very dangerous and very venomous animals is mostly uh, a combination of celebrities talking about it a lot, like talk shows. Um, it's a bit of exoticity, which means like, uh, uh, oh yeah, this place is so weird. Look, it's got all this venomous stuff. But there are places in the world that have many, many more dangerous animals than Australia does. Um, Africa is probably the main one that uh, compared with, with Australia. Um, it's just a bit of an issue when people start talking about that, and it's not very true. And I want to kind of get to the bottom of, of, of what the, the truth behind that, that, that question. So, um, in order to kind of answer this properly, we need to understand that you know Australia is no different from any other place in the world in terms of diversification of venomous creatures. We have um, less venomous animals than Africa does, we have less venomous animals than even South America does. Uh, uh, in fact, Africa has more venomous mammals than Australia does. So it's not that big of a, of a deal when you're talking about Australia in that sense. The only difference when we're talking about Australia in terms of venomous creatures are our reptiles because Australia has more venomous snakes than non-venomous ones. And no other continent on the planet has that. And for a while, it's been a bit of a mystery as to why, but in the late 80s and early 90s, it became pretty clear, uh, the answer became pretty clear to that. So, basically, uh, in order to talk about this, we kind of need to just focus on reptiles, because um, a lot of people think Australia got very venomous uh, spiders. We don't. Our spiders are actually pretty harmless. Um, redback spiders and funnel webs are literally the only two spiders in the entire continent that can actually kill you. So all the thousands of other species of spiders that live in Australia are effectively, well, they're not harmless, but they're not gonna kill you. They can still hurt you and they can still venomize you and you will probably need a hospital treatment after being bitten by one, but they're not gonna kill you. So arachnids are out of the, out of the situation. My hair is flopping down. <laughs> um, now we've got to talk about reptiles. So um, crocodiles. Big, very, they're huge, they're famous for in Australia. Massive, really, really scary animals. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest crocodiles in the world. And they live right here in Australia and also in the Indonesian islands. And um, they're just very popular because they're so big. They dwarf Nile crocodiles, they dwarf the uh, uh, American crocodiles and the American alligators and South American caimans and, and gharials and all that sort of stuff. So people go, oh, well, they why does Australia have crocodiles? That's so crazy. Why are they so big? Why are they so powerful? The reason for this is simply because Australia, for the longest time after the Cretaceous extinction, the main dominant animals in Australia were actually marsupials, mammals. Um, you know, Phylocolio carnifex, uh, Diprotodon, uh, uh, Procoptodon, all these really big marsupial animals that ran around the Australian plains and the Australian deserts hunting and killing and foraging and just doing what normal mammals do, basically. Then something happened, and it happened to most of the other animals around the world. The Ice Age came. Now, the Ice Age didn't actually affect Australia very much at all because we're in the Southern Hemisphere. So the effects of the Ice Age weren't really felt on this continent. And the animals continued to exist usually as they would. While in the Northern Hemisphere, everything froze over and got cold and got spooky and, 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 and horrible. But something did happen as a result of the Ice Age that led to the extinction of the megafauna, which we don't know entirely about. Um, nobody really knows what happened to the megafauna, but there's a pretty conclusive clue. So, what the Ice Age did, it drained, it did, well, it didn't drain it, but it, it lowered the sea levels by freezing most of the oceans, not most, much of the ocean's water, and um, effectively, the sea levels uh, uh, dropped and new land was created because you know, you've know you got lower water, which means that the shallower stuff is now exposed. 
I don't know what that is. Someone's drilling something. I'm sorry. Um, I don't have good lighting, so I needed to keep the door open and windows and stuff, and it's it's not a, it's not a good time. But I hope that that doesn't matter, and you're just here to learn stuff anyway. So, um, now anybody who knows a fair bit about prehistory will know that when land bridges form, there's a certain species that tends to come along and explore new land, more so than any other animal species. Homo sapiens, everybody's favorite destroyer. They come along down from Papua New Guinea and the Indonesian islands and they come down to Australia. And they come along and they look around and say, oh, well, yeah, this is an interesting place. Let's start wrecking it. And they do. Because humans do that. Every single time humans go to a new place, a new territory that's never been discovered before, it just gets ruined. And unfortunately, that is what happened. Um, of course, I'm not putting the blame of the extinction of the megafauna in, in Australia entirely on the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people, but it's just a bit suspicious. <laughs> as soon as they showed up, stuff started dying out. And... Um, of course, you know, unfortunately, there's no evidence of anything still existing from that time. It was about 60, 70,000 years ago. Um, but who knows? Maybe one day we'll find more stuff about it. We know that they hunted uh, large marsupials and um, they probably had encounters with Phylocolio carnifex and they definitely had encounters with Varanus priscus, otherwise known as Megalania, the big lizard, the gigantic Komodo dragon, the largest lizard that ever lived. Maybe not the largest, actually, I think it actually was the largest lizard ever lived. I don't know if the synapses were bigger than, than Diprotodon, uh, than Varanus priscus. But anyway, let's continue with this. So, all the megafauna in Australia die out post Ice Age. It's pretty empty by this point. The saltwater crocodiles get bigger and bigger and bigger because they don't have any competition anymore. There's no big predators running around hunting the prey that they're trying to hunt. So they can just, they can become the dominant predator of the country. Now, snakes in Australia have a very interesting history, and it's actually the reason why they're so venomous and potent. You see, going back a few million years or so, there were two kinds of snakes in the world, Aspidites and Elapids. Now, Aspidites were pretty uh, docile snakes. They branched off from the snake family tree long before pythons evolved. And they came down to Australia and started hanging around here and doing what they do best. Now, despite the Aspidites uh, coming down here and being actually quite successful, they didn't really fill up the food chain too much because they were very specified. They weren't very venomous and um, they were really more, much more akin to pythons and, and stuff like that, which is where the Australian pythons come from. Then another kind of snake comes along. The Elapids. Now these guys mean business. They're real, real dangerous, extremely potent, venomous snakes. They come down plain, you son of a bitch. Just, just keep going. It's probably doing circles. Okay, the Elapids. So they come down from South Asia and they're, they're, they're the real, real deal, all right? They're the guys like the Cobras, like your Mumbas, those kind, of, those kind of snakes. Real venomous, really deadly, really potent, toxic, venomous animals. They come down to Australia and they just wipe the floor with everything. They take top place on the food chain because they're so dangerous. This is where your Eastern Browns, your Inland Taipans, all those kind of snakes evolve from these guys. They evolve from the Elapids. And they spread around and they diversify into all these different groups. And because they're so successful, they actually outcompete the Aspidites, which were the uh, python-like non-venomous snakes. And the, and the Elapids uh, do so well that they, that they turn Australia into the only continent in the world which has more venomous snakes than non-venomous ones. And some of these guys are really, really deadly. I mean, we're talking about some of the deadliest snakes in the world. The Eastern Brown Snake is arguably the deadliest terrestrial snake on the planet. You get bitten by one of those guys, you're gone. You're dead. Seven minutes flat, you're probably gonna die, depending on how large you are and where you get bitten. I'm six foot five, so if an Eastern Brown bit me on the ankle, I'd probably be alive for about 10, maybe even 15 minutes, depending on how well, you know, 
uh, I can, oh, I, well, if I got bitten by an eastern brown, I'd apply a tourniquet and do all sorts of stuff. But thinking about if you didn't do that, if you're out in the middle of the desert and you were just trying to, you know, you didn't know what you were doing and you got bit by an eastern brown, you would probably die within 15 minutes, 10 minutes. You're a goner, basically. Um, they're, they're serious. So yeah, that's where uh, all the venomous snakes from Australia, all the real, you know, venomous animals in Australia came from. Australia, as I said at the start, it's not really that dangerous of a place. Um, you just have to be very cautious and aware of, of your surroundings, and in particular snakes. Uh, if you're living in a warmer part of Australia, I live in Melbourne, in the suburbs, so it's a bit cold here most of the year. Um, but we don't really get too many snakes down here. We get some browns down by the creek. Um, but snakes love really warmer uh, climates and temperatures. So if you're living in those warmer areas of Australia, then you're going to worry about snakes and spiders and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, down here, we don't really get too many fun. We don't get fun ones at all, actually. We don't get. We do get redbacks, but um, they're a bit rare because it's a bit too cold for them. We mostly just get them less harmful spiders, but they're really big, which I think is what people are quite scared of, especially huntsmen. But I love huntsmen. They're, they're adorable. They're just big, furry spiders. They're great. Um, so yeah, I hope that that's answered some questions for some people. Australia is not as deadly as people make it out to be. It's just, um, God, that hair look. It's just uh, um, a bit, you know, exoticized. It's a bit... People who go on talk shows, especially, unfortunately, Australian celebrities, Margot Robbie included, uh, um, Chris Hemsworth, all those kind of guys, go on there and they sort of talk about it and they go, oh yeah, you know, there's a snake hanging around here. And, you know, it's a very Australianized, you know, they go on there just really more of a promoting Australia in a very, uh, well, actually, exoticized is the perfect word. I've used it like four times in this video, but it's true, that kind of manner. And, um, I don't know. I don't think it's very accurate. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I hope I taught you something in this video. And I will see you guys next time. Cheers.